What is up, everyone? Welcome back to the Crypto Blitz, your home for your crypto fix. I'm your host, Triple Van Winkle. Boy, oh boy. Hopefully, everyone so far is having an amazing Saturday. It's July 22nd, but the markets aren't looking so hot, folks. If you listen to this morning's video, XRP had to do one thing and one thing only, and that was to hold 75 cents before the close coming in tomorrow. We are currently down over 5.5%, coming in at 0.733, and it looks like more downside is on the horizon. What does this mean? You're going to have another chance to load up, not financial advice. I'm just letting you know what I do. We can drop all the way back to that 50 cent level. That will be the last drop before we see this thing take off. I'm telling you right now, and I stressed this during the live auction I heard earlier, I, I held earlier today, excuse me. The institutions want to get you out. The big boys, the banks, the financial advisors, they all want you out of crypto. Why? Because they are coming in this year and they are taking it over. Do you really think that these large institutions are buying your Bitcoin up here at 30K? Buying your XRP up here at 73 cents? Buying your Ethereum up here at over $1,800? Of course not. They are going to do whatever they can to crumble this thing to the floor. Then they are going to come in. They're going to make it near impossible for you to buy cryptocurrency. They're going to make you go through them and leverage their exchanges and the people that they are working with so they can collect all their fees. They're buying, they're selling, they're trading, the withdrawals, the honor ups, you name it. They see the amount of money that's in crypto. They know where this thing is going. We're at $1.2 trillion. This is going to be a 10 plus trillion dollar asset class. They are lining themselves up to take over. You look at these final dips before the bull run kicks off in November and you load up. Not financial advice, but it's just what I'm doing, folks. That's how I'm going to make a crap ton of money. That is how I am going to be able to escape the old 8 to 5 job. The plan's already in place. The motions are already in place. You just have to stick to the plan. Don't be afraid. Dollar cost average is the best thing that you can possibly be doing. Because if XRP does drop to 70 cents, you bought more. 65 cents, you bought more. 60 cents, you bought more. And if it drops by 30 or 40%, you buy 2x more. And next thing you know, you just dollar cost average and the strap in they really affect you and you have even more XRP than you had before and then when it goes up you make even more money it's simple it's simple how this works but instead what I see people doing is they're buying the top because they're getting FOMO and then when it comes back down they're afraid to buy stop trying to time the market stop trying to time the bottoms you dial the cost average in. It's that simple. Now, if you see extra P goes all the way back down to like 20 cents, 17 cents, you pretty much know that the bottom's in. It's not going any lower. And if you see Bitcoin get back down to say $10,000, you know the bottom is 100% in. I'm not saying we're going there. I'm giving you an example. And then you can unleash the beast because you know from there, there is only so much downsize left before this thing pops off. XRP is going to a minimum of its all-time high, folks, this bull run. Best case scenario, you're going to see a $20 XRP. Think about that. Bitcoin, $29,810. It's currently down 0.71% in the past 24 hours. Ethereum coming in at $1,862. It's down 1.81%. XRP is coming in at $0.73. Cents. It's down 5.62%. We need XRP to make a turnaround. There's still plenty of time left in the day and in tomorrow for XRP to get back above $0.75. Cents. Maybe it's just trying to give everyone a little bit of a heart attack before it shoots back up. Total cryptocurrency market cap, $1.2 trillion. We jump over to this. May, May, Megan says, what do we have here? Bank of England, Central Bank of Brazil, Singapore, Bank of America, Credit Suzy, and JP Morgan all connected or all have connections going into Ripple. Here's the final round. What are they talking about? It says, on the matter, a recent Bank of England reports presents a successful trial of the Interledger Protocol for cross-border payments. It goes on to say, particularly the handling of availability of liquidity and cross-border payments to be explored since Ripple, the tested blockchain technology, was designed for retail and corporate transactions. We slide over to this. We see point two. Once again, talking about who? 
Ripple and using Interledger. Folks, yes, the Interledger does not need to use XRP. The Interledger is going to use the fastest and cheapest cryptocurrency out there, and that's going to be XRP. There's no ifs, ands, and buts about it. Now, Shannon Thorpe said, let's talk XRP. Let's talk it, because I like talking. A few of you have asked about price predictions, time frames, etc., etc., when no one can predict the price. I will say, and I think we all know this, the price of XRP cannot be cheap. Joel Katz even told you this, that the price of XRP cannot be cheap. What's more, retail will be priced out of XRP at some point. I see a lot of nonsense online regarding the price is going to jump in and crash because everyone's going to sell. While that may be your theory, here's mine. Retail only makes up about 1% of the XRP space. Think, think about that for a second. You think that there are a ton of XRP holders out there? It is. There aren't. 1% of us make up the retail space. Everyone's biggest fear was that there's so many of us that own XRP that they're never going to make everyone in this world so freaking rich from it. Folks, we only make up 1%. That's absolutely nothing. By the time the Fed, banks, businesses, etc. start putting their money into it, that 1% of re retail is going to look like a, minim a minnow in an ocean. That 1% will not fluctuate the price at all. We don't right now. Retail's not moving this price. A large quantity of XRP facilitates a large quantity of banks. While this high price allows for higher transactions with less XRP. There's only so much XRP. That's Shannon's opinion. I like it. Time frames. Again, something, again, something that cannot be predicted. However, with Fed now going live two days ago, I would assume that they cannot be the only one going live. Whatever the Fed does, the banks must follow because that is how the, the communicate the communicate bank how they communicate back and forth. Excuse me. Whatever banks choose to do, their businesses, customers must follow because this is how they communicate with the banks. This is what I deal with in treasury management, money movement, and the connections of that money movement. What have we seen been tested in the back end of these companies <clears throat> to help them manage the treasury management? MoneyGram is the biggest example I like to give. XRP was tested, and it still will be used for treasury management because MoneyGram is coming back on board. Remember that. Allow me to explain further on that. I previously worked for Wachover in the cash vault. In the cash vault, they use a system called Glory. I eventually left several years later and they worked on Loomis as the bounce and order and cash operations. They also use Glory. Fast forward 15 years later, I went back to the initial cash vault to find that they still are using the same Glory system. The system was also how Fed shipments of currency could be placed. What I'm getting at is I would be very surprised if the Federal Reserve were the only ones going live this Thursday. Throughout my banking career, I have noticed that whatever the Fed does, the banks will follow. Spot on. Folks, the Fed's big brother. Whatever the Fed's doing, everyone else is following. What do you think happened with ISO 20022? Swift said everyone that wants to be still connected to us, to the Swift banking system, must integrate ISO 20022. What did they all do? They integrated it. That's basically the reason why banks are closed on holidays, because the Fed is closed. Banks are for profit. Why would any company stop operations because of a holiday if they are for profit? Think about it. Now, I could be totally wrong in this, but possibly that's going to suck if I am. However, I've seen a lot through my 15 years career. Shannon's very smart, folks. She's very smart. Coinbase's CLO chimes in on the, the thought that the SEC might appeal the ruling of XRP. He says it's only the commission cited one case, any case, in which the level of howiness required various bases on the sophistication of the investors at issue. Tellingly, they don't. And once more, argue policy over the law as it is. Mark Cuban said they also refer to every buyer as an investor in the filing. That's not the case, and Ripple made that clear. Securities have one purpose, to be a security. For DeFi or sex buyers, it's impossible to know why a buyer buys, but it is possible to look at the blockchain and see if there are transactions based on the utility of the token. Spot on, Mr. Cuban. We're going to fast forward because Stu and Alderati jumps in right here. And he responds to Brad Golikowski because Brad put out a massive statement that you need to listen to. Stu Alderati said the securities agency, the SEC we're talking about, folks, only has jurisdictions over securities. No security, no role for the SEC. Pretending to have jurisdiction where there is none is simply a political power play. It helps no one, but it hurts everyone. That was in response to what Brad Gollinghouse put out because this is a massive message. 
He goes, an important topic has come up about protecting retail. And Brad put this out. 5.43 on a Saturday. The SEC created this mess by proclaiming it was the cop on the crypto beat when it had no legal jurisdiction. Where's that gotten us? Consumers left holding the bag in bankruptcy court while the SEC holds press conferences. It's absurd to blame a judge for faithfully applying the law. We all know legislation. Not more regulation by enforcement is the only way forward to provide clear rules and to protect retail. Glad to see more members of Congress, like Representative Ritchie and Patrick McHenry, are jumping on this beat. Folks, the judge made her ruling. That ruling is an official ruling. It is now ordered from the court. It is now law. XRP to the retail investors is not a security. The SEC wants to go ahead and try to appeal this. Let them. We'll see you in two to three years when the SEC finally gets through because Ripple's going to take them through the gauntlet. And I'll tell you this right now. The SEC does not have any more ammunition. They have nothing else to provide to this case. They're not going to appeal it. This is a buff, a bluff. This is a power move by them. And that power move is about to get shot down. I'm going to leave it like that. Listen, wash your damn hands. Be nice and be kind of each other. Ripple Van Winkle is out.